As a person with a type of severe sound sensitivity, known more recently as misophonia, I have invested a good deal of time and effort in, among other things, studying residential noise abatement. And since the vast majority of soundproofing videos on YouTube are more or less advertisements, I've decided to add some information I can on the topic as best as I've been able to grasp it. But before I get started, let me just clear up a way too common misconception. Egg cartons attached to your walls will not accomplish soundproofing in the strictest sense of the word. Their irregular shape helps to scatter sound waves so as to reduce echo, which gives the impression of soundproofing by simply reducing reverb in the room, which is sort of like static on a TV. However, it should be fairly intuitive to anyone that super thin pieces of cardboard or foam will do little to stop the full intensity of the sound wave after it's managed to penetrate solid wallboard, windows, or doors, and makes a beeline straight for your eardrums. Sound takes on the properties of whatever material it's moving through. When sound moves through air, it creates pressure waves of air particles that expand outward, literally like ripples in a pond. This is because gases and liquids are both fluid and have similar motions. When people talk about soundproofing, they're usually talking about sound isolation, which means deflecting the pressure of these waves. What we want is to keep sound from penetrating into or out of a room, and this is only accomplished with solid, heavy barriers. A large part of how well the barrier deflects the sound's energy rather than absorbing it has to do with the weight of the wall. That is, the heavier the wall is, the more energy it will deflect. However, solid materials have a disadvantage. They transfer vibration very well at particular frequencies, which change from material to material. The weakest point in a solid material which transfers the most amount of vibration is called its fundamental resonance frequency. For example, if you tap on the side of a glass cup, it will vibrate at a noticeably higher fundamental than if the cup were made of plastic. Soft materials vibrate at a lower frequency, but thicker materials of the same type of material will also vibrate at a lower frequency. Softer materials have an advantage here, though. They don't retain vibration very well in general, and given the material is flexible enough, they can have so low of a fundamental as to be inaudible. However, bear in mind that we are not talking about the material's vibrations at all frequencies, only its fundamental resonance frequency, and the frequencies near the fundamental. That said, the weight of the wall is still a much more important factor in soundproofing than how rigid or limpid the barrier is. There's a material sold as a soundproofer called mass-loaded vinyl, or MLV, which is often sold by various different companies under various names. MLV is used for a combination of being very heavy for its thickness of usually an eighth of an inch, and having few resonating problems due to its extreme flexibility, and can be made to be transparent as well. Mass-loaded vinyl is stapled over the wall studs and sealed up as one solid sheet before drywall is attached to it. It is better than drywall by itself, however, mass-loaded vinyl is also extremely expensive, and its overall performance isn't much better than drywall. It seems like mass-loaded vinyl is a good choice if you're going for soundproofing for absolute minimum wall thickness and don't mind paying the uh, extra cost. For odd jobs where drywall is impractical, and for specialized purposes such as in bass traps if you're a musician. There are other ways to alleviate resonance issues inherent in solid mass materials, and the big one is called damping. When you dampen a vibration, you convert its energy into a different form, usually heat. There are sound damping compounds on the market which are usually sold in caulking tubes, the most notable competitors being Green Glue and Quiet Glue Pro. These compounds are applied evenly to two layers of drywall at a rate of one to two tubes per four by eight foot area. For those who are curious how it works, when the drywall layers are made to vibrate, they stretch and distort the compound, causing the vibration to be converted into heat through friction, as the compound's internal components rub against one another. This is the least expensive way to add soundproofing, with Quiet Glue Pro being the cheapest at around $10 per tube, for now. These compounds are reportedly very effective at removing the fundamental resonance frequency of most types of wallboards, from wood to gypsum as well as increasing overall performance, particularly at the medium to high frequency range of human hearing. That and the fact that two sheets of drywall will have about the same mass as one sheet of drywall and one sheet of MLV. At the very least, this puts damping compounds way ahead in the cost advantage over MLV.